Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering a question from the June 2023 International A Level at Excel Mechanics M1 exam. This is question number eight, which is about vectors. And we're told about the square floor space ABCD with center O is modeled as a flat horizontal surface measuring 50 by 50 meters, as shown in figure five. The horizontal unit vectors i and j are the in the direction of a b and a d respectively so i is in this direction and j is in that direction okay and they're unit vectors one unit long right so i, I can, I'll, I'll just i want to draw it, draw it like that because i is one unit in that direction and j is one unit in that direction okay all right, so the all position vectors are given relative to the origin O, okay? And it says, a small robot R is programmed to travel across the floor at constant velocity. At time t equals zero, R is at the point with position vector minus 2i plus j. At time t equals 11 seconds, R is at the point with position vector 9i plus 23j meters. At time t seconds, the position vector of the robot R is R meters. Find in terms of T, I, and J an expression for R. So we got to find an expression for the position vector of R. Now, the position vector of an object, okay, in this case, is, we're going to have to call it R, is equal to its position when time is zero, which is called R zero, plus the velocity that it's traveling at times time. Okay, so if we know the position that it was at at time equals zero, which we know, so that's that's a R zero, and I'm going to write these as column vectors because I like to use column vectors for my calculations. But in the end, I'm going to have to write my answer in terms of i and j. That's very important. Sometimes you might neglect to do that in the end. I really like to use column vectors rather than i and j, i and j for my calculations. It just makes everything more neat and organized. But in the end, I'm going to write my answer in i and j because they told us to, right? So we know that the position vector when time is zero is R zero. Okay, which is minus 2i plus j. Okay, so we know this. Okay, uh, in, it's going to be in terms of t. So for us to find r, we need to now find what the velocity is. Okay, we need to find what the velocity that it's traveling at. It's, it's a velocity. Now, we can find its velocity because we know that, um, you know, the time it's traveled, 11 seconds, it has gone from this vector to that vector. Okay, so we can apply this formula to that because this is the position vector at any particular time. So we can say when time equals 11, we can say R11 is equal to R0 plus V times 11. Okay, when time equals 11, then its position, okay, when time equals 11 is R0 plus V times 11. Now we know its position when R was 11 seconds. They've told us. Okay, so that's going to be 9 and 23. 9i plus 23j. And that's equal to r0, which we already know as well, which is minus 2i plus j. Okay, minus 2, 1. Plus the velocity vector we, we don't know, times 11. So if I just rearrange this, okay, if I subtract this from both sides, so I'll have 9 minus, okay, 923 9, minus minus 2 and 1. So I've just subtracted this vector from both sides. That's going to be 11 times v. So if I subtract these two, I have 9 minus minus 2, which is 11. 23 minus 1, which is 22. And that's e equal to 11v. Therefore, the velocity is going to be 1 over 11 times 11 and 22, which is basically 1, 2. Right? So I know the velocity vector is 1, 2. Now I know the velocity vector, I could say r is equal to r0 which is minus 2 1 plus t times 1 2 okay so if you want to do it in terms of i and j i can say this this is my i component which is minus 2 plus t i and this is 1 plus 1 plus um 2 t j the, J, the I component is this, 1 minus 2 plus T I, minus 2 plus T, or that's my I component, and this is my J component, 
1 plus 2tj. So I can write it like this. I think it looks a bit neater if I put t minus 2i plus 2t plus 1j. That is my r, position vector of the robot. Okay, t minus 2i plus 2t plus 1j. That's in terms of i and j and t. i and j and t. So there we have the answer to part A. Okay, and now we're going to go on to part B. So it says here, a second robot S is at the point C. At time t equals 0, S leaves C and moves with the constant velocity I minus I plus J. So C is this point over here. Now, the position vector of C is basically going to be from there to there. Okay, which is basically, if you think about it, if this is a square and that's the center of the square, then we know that this from there to there is 25 meters and from there to there is 25 meters. So we can say that the position vector of C, O to C, okay, is going to be given by 25i and 25j. 25i, 25j. Okay. So at time equals zero, okay, for the robot S, we can say that um, its position vector is going to be 25, 25, right? At time equals zero, so that's the initial position. Its velocity, they've told us, is minus one, minus one, okay? And it says at time t seconds, the position vector of s is s meters. Okay, so we can say s equals, let's call this s0 now, because we're given the letter s, s0 plus v times t. So s is equal to s0, which we know, which is 25, 25, plus v times t, which is minus 1, minus 1 times t. So t times minus 1, minus 1. So in terms of i, j, we can write this as 25 minus 1 or 25 minus t i plus 25 minus t j. That's the position vector of s. Okay, one mark for that, right? And then it says show that s to r is given by this vector. Now, we know that the position vector of s, okay, is basically from O to the point S, O to the robot S, and that's going to be given by this 25 minus T and 25 minus T. That's 25 minus Ti and 25 minus Tj. I like to write it in this form. And we know O to R is given by the vector we found earlier. Okay, what was the vector we found earlier? It's down here. It's... Um, you can say t minus 2 and 2t plus 1. t minus 2, 2t plus 1. So t minus 2 and 2t plus 1. So that's the i component, that's the j component. Right? So we want to find how to get from s to r. Okay, so this is basically vector s, this is basically vector r. Right? We want to know how to go from s to r. So if this is o, and let's say this is s, and let's say this is r, any particular time. That's O to S, that's O to R, that's the vector S, that's the vector R. Okay, we want to go from this way, we want to go from S to R, we want to go this way. So if you go from S to R, okay, S to R is basically going to be, um, it's going to be the vector R minus the vector S. Minus, o, minus OS plus OR. Okay, so it's going to be R minus S, which is going to be this minus that. So you're going to have T minus 2 and 2t plus 1, take away 25 minus t, and 25 minus t. So what's that going to give us? t minus minus t is 2t, and you're going to have minus 2 minus 25, which is going to be minus 27. 2t minus 27, that's the i component. And the j component is going to be 2t minus minus t, which is 3t. We're going to have 1 minus 25, which is minus 24. So we can see we've got exactly what they want. So we can say S to R is equal to, we have to just write it in terms of I and J. So this is the I component, which is 2T minus 
i and this is the j component plus 3t minus 24j and that's all in meters so there we have shown um, s to r okay is equal to this all right then part d it says find the time when the distance between r and s is a minimum okay this is where we have to think a little bit about p2 okay if you think about the word minimum when we talk about in p2 it's like something to do with you know um, when we talked about differentiation so it's going to have something to do with that maybe but we know that the distance this is like the vector from s to r this is the vector from s to r and we know that the distance is basically um, the magnitude of the vector between them okay this is like the um, you know the mag this the, the magnitude of the displacement is the distance so we need to find for the distance we need to think about the magnitude of the vector s to r okay and we know this is the vector s to r so it's going to be 2t minus 27 squared plus 3t minus 24 squared if i find the square root of that i'm going to get okay the distance between them the magnitude of the of the of the uh, displacement is the distance so what i'm going to do i'm going to write this as squared and i'm going to say let d be the magnitude of s to r i'll call it d okay so this is going to be d squared equals 2t minus 27 squared plus 3t minus 24 squared and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to basically um, form an equation from this okay by um, squaring this okay i'm going to square this so i'm going to say d squared is equal to if i square this i'm going to get 4t squared i'm going to multiply these together that's going to give me minus 54t i'm going to square this that's going to be plus 27 squared i'll just work out what, what that is in a minute and then i have plus if i square this um sorry my bad here don't want to mess up at this point so 4t squared minus i multiply these together and double it so it's minus 54 times 2 which is minus 180 and then you're going to have plus 27 squared because it's going to become positive when you square it and then i'm going to have plus and this is going to be 3t squared, which is 9t. Also, if you, if you square 3 and t, you get 9t squared. Then multiply these together. That's going to give me 3 times negative 24, which is going to be minus 72. And then multiplied by 2, which is minus 144 times t. And then I'm going to have a plus 24 squared. So I can say that d squared is equal to, that's 4t squared plus 9t squared, that's 13t squared, minus 108 minus 144 minus 108 minus 144 it's going to be negative that's going to be 252 so minus 252 t and then i'm going to have 27 squared plus 24 squared so i'll just work out that is 27 squared plus 24 squared that gives us 1305 plus 1305 Okay, now, that's the square of the distance between those two points. Now, if I want to find the minimum distance between them, if I find the differential of this, if I differentiate this with respect to time, that will give me, um, like something which i can work out the ma minimum and maximum values of this right and this is a quadratic this is a quadratic it's going to have just the minimum okay so if i can find the minimum value of of this okay that will be the minimum value of the square of the distance between those two objects that will be the minimum value of the square of the distance between those two objects what I don't want to do now is find the square root because then we're going to have something that's going to be really complicated, the square root of all of that. But this is something that I can differentiate easily. If I differentiate this, I'm going to get 26t minus 252. That's easy for me to differentiate, and then I can continue. So the minimum value of this, 
Okay, when I so when I make this equal to zero, it will be 26t minus 252 equals zero. So I'll say 26t equals 252. So then I can say t equals 252 divided by 26. Okay, if I if I find that 252 divided by 26, that gives me 9.69, 9.69 seconds. Now that's actually my answer because that's the time when the square of the distance between these two objects is the least amount. So of course that will be the same time when the actual distance between them is the least amount as well. It'll be the same time. Okay, because this expression is for the square of the distances. I could have found the, the, I could have put the square root of all of this, but then I'm going to have to differentiate something which has got to the power of a half. I'm going to have to use a chain rule. In the end, I'll get the same value for t. Okay, because if, the, if this is the time when the square of the distances between them is the least, then of course it will be the same time when the actual distance between them is the least as well. All right, so this is the answer to this question. That's the time when the distance between R and S is a minimum. Okay, so this is a bit more of an advanced kind of question, this last part. Um, there are some examples in the Solomon papers like this and a few from the past, but this is like one of the blasts from the past type of questions. I haven't seen this particular type of question for a long time, but it's in my uh, endotopic worksheets, actually. Okay, something like this. Uh, I remember this one about this two dogs, Fido and Growl or something like that. So those of you who did go diligently through the endotopic worksheets should um, have benefit from that in this particular question. Anyway, that's the answer to this question number eight. Most of it was pretty decent, apart from that last part, which is something a bit advanced, but you should know how to do it. Um, so that's the answer to question eight. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from this topic of vectors in M1 in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you watch the video that will appear in this uh, link at the top here, it will take you or show you how to use my channel to find what you're looking for efficiently. Thank you for watching and see you soon.